First-person shooters on any gaming platform have always been among the most exciting games out there, no matter the twist. We get tons and tons of new ones of its kind, and when it comes to mobile devices, that number actually gets even higher. In any case, today I'm going to be showing you about 25 of the most realistic, visually advanced third- and first-person shooters of 2022 for your Android and iOS devices as well. Let's go. And number one, and quite frankly, it's one of the more underrated first person shooters sitting on the platform right now. In case you have missed it, we've got Bright Memory Mobile. This is a game that started life as a highly realistic hack and slash and first person shooter created by just one man, and now sitting on the play store for about two dollars with only one problem it is very short. Check it out in case you missed it. Coming up behind that we've got, well, first and foremost, by NetEase, which is one of the greatest mobile game developers out there right now since the beginning of 2022, a realistic warfare survival first-person shooter from August this year and sitting on the Play Store with over a million downloads ever since, going by the name Lost Light. This is a sort of escape from Tarkov competitive shooter with some really good graphics and super smooth gameplay, lots of maps, lots of content, and quite literally free all the way. This whole thing is nuts. They've played us like fools, Rue. But if they think they're gonna get away with this... <laughs> They must be crazier than I am. With over a hundred million downloads and over 4.5 review scores out of five on the Play Store. And number three, we've got actually one of the oldest, but most fine tuned in gameplay and graphically first person shooters of all time here going by Modern Combat 5. Now for those of you new, this is a tactical single player and multiplayer original IP that started life more than a decade ago. It is pretty much all the way free with just the smoothest gameplay on the platform right now. Moving on, we've got the one and only Shadowgun Legends. This is the single tactical first person competitive shooter in today's list that has actually won awards. Now, whether you're in for a game's story, replay value, music, or just the sheer content of it, this game has it all to an almost perfect extent. It's free almost all the way, it does have controller support, it's so realistic you could actually forget it's a mobile game at times, and very diverse in customization options. Coming up behind that from a tad over a month ago, we've got T3 Arena, one of the biggest projects released last month as a 3 vs 3 arena based battle royal shooter with a nice little cast of characters, pretty unique. This game's actually playable solo but better with played online, co-op obviously, it's got the best third person cell shaded graphics on the platform right now. There is one downside though, the game will take you down from 1.4 gigabytes of space and it is all the way free. And number six, from a little more than a month ago, we've got ATSS 2. Now, for those of you new, this is mainly an offline game, a mission based shooter, and pretty much like the old Division games, about in a war setting. It's a quick mission game sitting on the Play Store as I'm speaking with a 5 out of 5 review score. It's extremely impressive in visuals and very smooth in controls. In fact, even playable with a controller. At number seven, as an honorable mention, since this game's still in its beta phase since June this year, we've got here something called Dead 4 Returns. Now, for those of you new, uh, this is a multiplayer co-op 
shooter that is actually made with Unreal Engine 4. It's been through a couple of betas so far and since reveal, the game is set to be released in its full by the end of the month, so keep it in mind and make sure to stay tuned for that precise release date. Moving on, we've got Modern Shrike Online PvP. Now, this is perhaps not my words, however, the best first-person shooter on the Play Store. I mean, I do see a lot of people complaining about this one, mainly because there's some people that hack into the game, and it's kind of a bit hard to just sign in in the beginning. But for free-to-play multiplayer, this is literally a god amongst the rest. Games over 2GB of space, though, is down over 100 million times, and it's actually been around since 2016, so it's literally bug-free. At number 9, we've got, once again, Armed Heist. From, well, all the way back March of 2019, this had to be in today's list, guys, because it's literally the best game I could think of if we're talking multiplayer third-person shooters. Like, as far as free premium games go, this is a gem amongst the rest. It's a third-person bank robbery shooter where you face off against cops in offline and online stages. It's free. It's, of course, got some view ads. Lots of challenges, however. It's very fun, and it's already downloaded over 10 million times on the Play Store. And number 10, uh, it's the old modern gun from almost exactly a year ago since today. This game downloaded over a million times ever since with fairly positive reviews compared to any other in today's list. It's a tactical first-person shooter at its core, an online multiplayer with one of the best gameplay mechanics on the platform as I'm speaking. The game will take you down for almost 750 megabytes of space and this is how it really looks. Moving on, we've got once again Skyfall Chasers. Now, this is for those of you who missed it. Just a quick mention, a first-person shooter battle royale pretty much inspired by Apex Legends, albeit it's just a bit more mission-based, where the main goal here is to just collect this certain material in matches of up to 10 minutes and save this certain base. It's free, game's literally bug-free, even though it's been around for only a month, and this is how it really looks. Next up, we've got Shooter Legends. This is from a tad over a year ago as a third-person action shooter. Well, technically a battle royale style, pretty much Fortnite, but a first-person and a third-person shooter. One that kind of still needs a lot of improvements, in my opinion, and by that, I don't really mean in gameplay, I just mean it needs more content. It's free, though, it's very well done, quite bug-free, and it's got one downside. Socially, the game is kind of awkward, and you couldn't even really chat in the game, but that is it. At number 13, we've got by 707 Interactive from roughly two years ago, and ever since, downloaded over 10 million times, something here called Ninja's Creed 3D Shooting. One of the most realistic sniper shooting games, and what could happen if you were to mix a shooting game with something like Ninja Gaiden, or just a little bit of Overwatch's bow and arrow thing? Check it out, games got tons of content for a free game, it runs smooth, and it is free as hell. daughter. Hi, Amanda. I got into trouble. Quick mention, just so we could get, get to some more free goodness or something you could actually afford, we've got Alien Isolation. This is a damn near perfect mobile port of one of the greatest console horror games ever made to this day. If you do appreciate good graphics, decent controls and a good story on top, and a $15 price tag doesn't bother you, give this one a shot right now and you will be perfectly happy without seeing what we got here the rest. Hello? Is anyone there? If anyone can hear this, we need help. Repeat, we need help urgently. With over 110 million downloads ever since release, worldwide though, in all stores to be specific, I mean, it's only downloaded 50 million times on the Play Store, we've got the one and only Dead Trigger 2, a first-person horror game and a damn fine-tuned free-to-play 
Zombie Survival. Probably one of the most varied zombie games to this day, even though it's been around for almost a decade now. Check it out, games totally all the way offline, all the way free, and literally fine-tuned to perfection. And number 16 from April this year, we've got Gunfire Reborn, which is basically an adventure level-based first-person shooter with roguelite and role-playing game elements, technically Borderlands, but on your cell phones with a randomly generated encounter system. Game's got a really good depth, but no story. If I were to be 100% honest, you're gonna find zero better level-based first-person shooters on the Play Store right now. As a twist though, the game's not free. At number 17, with over 2 million downloads since only June this year, we've got Hyperfront Lite. This is a legitimately fine-tuned or graphically amazing 5 vs 5 first-person shooter, basically tactical shooter, that at first glance you could say it's a, just a rip-off of the old Valorant, which it might be, but, but really it isn't even one bit. It plays like Valorant, though, but with a unique taste of its own kind and very different characters. Check it out, this is how the game really looks. Moving on is the all-time famous Call of Duty Mobile, and now Season 7 or 8, I don't I actually forgot, also known as Legends of War. This is the first mobile installment of the Call of Duty saga that quite literally, just like the PC version, runs like a Modern Warfare or a Black Ops game on the mobile devices. I know most of you are already familiar with this one, so I will just say this is perhaps the best mobile shooting game that exists on the platform that also supports a controller, so you might want to take this one with a little bit of caution, because this game's really addictive. Don't get mad if I upstage you. Coming up behind that is the old EA games, Apex Legends, and now mobile. Technically, if you're a fan of Apex Legends in general, and you would like to give that a shot on your cell phone, it's for you, it works great on cell phones with very little to zero bugs. Technically everything the platform version had to offer and now you can do it all on the palm of your hands with very little effort and with everything that's previously released on the original version as well. So keep it in mind. Bullet Angel at number 20 is a somewhat modern and stylish first-person shooter for the mobile devices. And the reason that I did use the word modern is because this game is a reimagining version of a game that came out first like a decade ago. It's a pretty good or just a decent alternative for Hyperfront that we mentioned earlier. If you've had enough of that, it's almost the same except it's a tad slower. Game's free, takes you down for one gigabyte of space and it's got a lot of positive review scores as well. At number 21, from roughly two months ago, we've got something here called Day Before Die. This is an action third-person shooter. It's a zombie post-apocalyptic survival game, technically, and one with a lot of resemblance in terms of aesthetic. For those of you who do know or are aware of it, a console game called The Day Before. We'll check it out. Game's free. It's playable both online and offline with a story mod and even a few endings as well. Portal, on the other hand, is a hybrid of a first-person shooter and a puzzle-style gaming. Offering tens of hours of totally unique gameplay, it's not a first-person shooter in almost any way, only played in first-person. Assuming you're familiar with Valve, this is actually one of the first games the company made its way to the market with. Check it out, game's not free, takes you down for 10 bucks, but boy does it give you some mind-blowing stuff for a mobile port. If you're into console quality mobile game ports, you might want to give Shadowgun Dead Zone a shot over here. Technically speaking, a mobile exclusive, but plays pretty much like a console port, something you don't really see very often nowadays around here. It's actually one of the sharpest looking games on the Play Store. It's playable mostly online, got great servers, takes you for 250 megabytes of space, and it's downloaded over 10 million times since only last year.
Now guys, this is by far one of the best games released regardless of the genre. Number 24, we've got Zombie Horde, a first-person semi-autoplay portrait shooter with RPG elements and totally all the way free. Game's got a boatload of characters to just pick up and play around with, so many unique weapons and zombies and in-game content, it's playable both online and offline and it's taking you down for 200 megabyte of space only. So keep it in mind. And last but not least, I've actually mentioned this one a dozen times maybe here already, this has to be still one of the most visually advanced first person shooters of the year from April this year. Guys, we've got over here Rise of Demons, this is a Doom inspired first person shooter, totally an offline game but apparently the online co-op section is in the making. It's sick for being just a free game, got zero ads, playable offline, and it also plays with a controller.